Oh, okay, this is apparently working. Um, hi, I'm just trying this out because I saw Matt and Marisha do it and it was pretty amusing. So I thought I would try this out because why not? Uh, hi, hey everybody. I also clean my room, so I am finally decided it would be reasonable to see how that worked. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yes, it is Thursday, and I have just a tiny bit of time to kill before I have to leave the house to go deal with reality. Um, so I did say I would give a small tour, so now that everything is clean. Uh, so yeah, here, let me show show around. Uh, this is actually my room. I live with roommates, so this is where I spend most of my time. Uh, Here's actually some of the critical role art on the wall. Uh, terrifying things. TARDIS closet, because why not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, every room I've lived in for the past couple years has been purple. Uh, it is a thing. Uh, my teeny tiny little desk, which is currently ridiculous. Uh, my plan for the day is to mostly... Uh, I've got to pick up a friend from a VO meeting and then go... Uh, say hi to a few people. Uh, here is the ridiculous uh, collection of dead things which goes on forever. <laughs> uh, that's a project that I'm working on. I shouldn't show that yet. But um, I don't know. Purple just became a thing. It's fun. Uh, here's the book. This is the really fancy book collection. don't know if I can say where I'm going today. I tend to try not to say such things. Um, there's several different skulls. Oh yeah, there's this stuff too. Hold on. Uh, this is one of my freeze-dried mice. Little bits and pieces of things. Uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, this is a um, Bioshock fish tank, which is currently on loan from our friend Courtney King, who is currently away at college. So our little bubbly, bubbly friend. Um, I do put the mohawk up on occasion. It has been quite a while uh, since I've done Just because it's a pain in the ass. Um, I'm actually gonna be messing up my hair quite a bit soon. There's gonna be new hair probably after Whitestone. Um, which will be kind of ridiculous. We'll see. It, it's I really don't think about it as often as I should. Uh, yeah, thank you. That tank was actually built for a friend of ours by um, uh, fan builds. It's the same people who do uh, who do the sword builds online, uh, Man at Arms. Uh, you can check out actually the whole process that they went through to build it. Uh, there is a video on YouTube. Thank you for being a fan. It's fabulous. Uh, and yeah, thank you. The purple refuses to die. It's quite nice. But man, um, there's going to be some really ridiculous hair soon. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if uh, any of my friends would appreciate me getting a uh, gun tattooed on my scalp. But yes. Um, I can't... I'm definitely not going to talk about... I have no idea what tonight's going to be like. Um... Uh, but it's definitely going, I'm nervous as all hell, so that's always fun. Uh, yeah, the hair will be ridiculous. Um, do we watch any other D&D streams? Every now and then I'll pop into a few of them. I tend to try and keep quiet. I watch other streams on Geek and Sundry. Um, I'm, Minds and Crafts I'm kind of amused by. I find it really nice to clean to. Um, I am very excited about the conclusion of everything, and I'm really hoping I don't die, but just in case I do, I have plans for something else to do. I really am trying not to bet on it. Uh, Singapore, oh my god. Uh, and as for building, I've got a long list of stuff I want to build. Uh, that I've, I've had a long list of stuff I wanted to build for years, so I'm just slowly making my way through it. Um, 
Mike McFarlane. Mike McFarlane's amazing to work with. He's super, super cool. He's actually, he let me crash in his house for a while when I was living in Texas and he's crashed at mine. Um, he is fun to party with. He's fun to party with. He's fun to work with. Uh, he likes actors. You'd be amazed how many people don't like to work with actors who work with actors professionally. Um, hey, hi, dear. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I gave a little, I should probably give a little bit more of it, like an art tour, I suppose. Actually, since Kit, since you're here, I should show you something. So, yeah, um, that's what your stuff looks like framed on the wall. <laughs> so, that happened. Uh, right on Kitty Corner to Baphomet, right there. And... You teeny tiny, I've got some community prints that I got a while back. You could focus. Um, some ridiculous stuff, vintage -y, creepy photos that everyone has to do. We're hoping Ashley comes back. There's a little crochet TARDIS because those are adorable. Um, yes. And uh, Mary Blair because Mary Blair is awesome. Uh, my copy of Commandi, the last boy on earth. Uh, my little ridiculous goth kid collection of dead things. I couldn't be happier with how Percy's story has been coming out. Uh, it's really uh, the best I could have possibly hoped for. Um, it's everything I want and more. Uh, oh yeah, you should see, I should show you one of my cousin's photos, that's right. Uh, I'm amazed that you remember that. Here's my, here's my dead cousin on the wall. Uh, <laughs> bless her heart. <laughs> uh, having fallen down the stairs. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have a feeling that the sister's gonna go really badly. Uh, God, we have so much. I, I try, this is actually another, almost all the art in my house is by friends of mine. Um, with some exceptions. Uh, so it's one of the reasons why we have lots of really nice art is that we get friend discounts. There's another couple wonderful friend discount pieces. Uh, <laughs> if you have friends who are artists, it's a really good way to get your house really filled with nice stuff. Uh, this is another friend, Laura Peters, who did the four of these. Um, Oh yeah, no, I actually, there, there might be mild nudity in the background, and I do apologize, this is kind of a fun piece uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, we, we collect. No, I've got, yeah, actually, in, like I'll even say like a lot of the art, a lot of the art models and a lot of these paintings are actually friends as well. It's kind of, uh, my roommates and I have known each other for a very long time, and we sort of know the community around here. Yay, mild nudity. Uh, <laughs> uh, Adventurers League game. No, I don't know what the D&D Adventurers League game is. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, the stained glass spider webs I've had since I was a teenager. Uh, hi from Germany. Again, all these places I've never been. Um, I have two roommates at the moment, and I have two cats, and we have chickens. Uh, yes, I like Tuck's, Tuck's gift, although I haven't finished reading it yet. There's a lot there. Uh, <laughs> no, although we do have voice actors come crash on our couch on a while, every now and then. Uh, the cats are currently in trouble because they discovered one of the roommate's yarn collections. That did not go well. Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, actually, I'll go annoy the chickens. That's pretty adorable. Ah, uh, it's going to get very bright very quickly, and I apologize for that. And currently, I don't, I don't know if you guys know, but California is currently out, so we're, the garden is currently dead and being replanted. Our little studio in the back. They think they're getting fed. They're so excited. You guys are not getting fed. No, I'm just gonna sit here and stare at you.
They are dumb as sticks, but they definitely at least give us eggs and occasionally soup. But they're cute. Hi, guys. And yes, they are very loud. Uh, studio, I would show the studio. I'll show the studio at another time. It's currently locked up at the moment. Uh, but I would be do that some other time. But hi from Canada. Also, God, I do actually travel, I swear, but these are all places I haven't been. Um, I just got back from Alaska, which was amazing, and San Francisco to see my brother. Uh, other than that, Chicago I've been to, thank God. I love Chicago. And Portland. I love Portland. I actually have a lot of friends in Portland. Uh, hopefully we'll be going back soon. I am working on it. So... Um, have I have I been to Compton? Actually, yes. I have friends in Compton. We uh, we hang out on occasion. It's been a while, but you know. Uh, I don't know if I'm coming to Acon. Uh, and in fact, if you would like any of the Critical Role people at your conventions, just uh, bug your conventions about it. Although, and we'll try. Although we can only travel so much during the year before we all fall down and lapse into comas. I don't... How do I roll so many d20s? Uh, I don't know, and it could end at any moment. Um, I don't know if you saw me on group hug, but those were not my dice, and I still rolled really, really well. Um, I think for every Will Wheaton in the world, uh, there is an anti-Wheaton, and maybe I've just gotten lucky. Um, but... Uh, yeah, well, I sacrificed the chickens for good soup at the very least, so, but that is, a uh, that is definitely, we'll see, perhaps tonight will be the night where I roll terribly and everybody dies, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we're hoping to come to the UK soon, that would be really cool, uh, and we'll see how the Briarwoods end. I'm really, really, I'm genuinely very, very nervous. Thursdays are always nerve wracking until we get to the studio. Uh, and then, and then, uh, it all kind of chills out once we're actually playing. It does not say Silas loves you. It just, it just says, uh, it just says, uh, some other things. What are we? Oh, nothing, nothing fun yet. Oh, my, my chalkboard changes every like month or so, depending on what I'm working on. I used to have a big glass closet mirror, my last place I lived and I would cover it in notes. Uh, but that was a while ago. <laughs> The chickens are definitely sacrificial. Man, there's nothing to there's nothing to like reinforce the theory of being a carnivore like owning chickens. They are walking meat. It is just <laughs> uh, Is Percy gonna turn evil? God, I hope not. Uh Chris Christmas is, is already a technical nightmare. I don't know if we could possibly <laughs> there is so many we possibly put more effort into that than the show some nights. It is it is uh there has not been one that has gone smoothly. <laughs> uh we don't know. We still don't know if Ashley's gonna be there. We're trying really hard because it would make life so much easier if she could be there tonight. Um but but it's still up in the air. Um, she is sadly is uh, at the mercy of of larger forces. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I surround myself with with uh, with badass and adorable people, and they just rub off. Uh, we've actually done a couple LA critter meetups uh, when Kit was in town. Uh, Possibly at some point that's actually not a bad idea. There's a couple coffee shops and and I'll tell you what if I if I get work done I know this is a terrible way to do things But if I I'd go to coffee shops to work and if I have one of those days where I get work done really really quickly I'll just tweet out where I am uh, uh, I really like the uh, Yeah, the uh, Moby's was where we had the last one. I do spend a lot of time at Moby's coffee shop uh, The bourgeois pig also is really really nice one question, Lilith or Zara. <laughs> That's not fair. Uh, I refuse to answer that, especially with one of them listening. Um, crit roll flash mob. That would be great. 
Um, the comic, yeah, I suppose I should describe, like, put out some words about the comic really quickly. That would that would be helpful. Uh, Geek and Sundry basically said that they wanted to do a Critical Role comic, and we were, and Marisha and I, who who write stuff together, anyways, we we this is what we do for, I'd say fun, but it's what we do in an attempt to make money. Uh, we're like, great, that's a great idea. We've already got some thoughts, and they're like, but we want to do four panels a week. <laughs> We want to do a comic strip for four panels a week. And we're like, okay, we can do that too. Um, and that was, uh, uh, so it's going to be, there's only so much story you can tell in four panels. So the first, our first run of like uh, is it six or seven is very lighthearted. It's very, it's, it's, it's very simple. We're, we're, we're kind of going very Calvin and Hobbes-ish with the whole vibe of it, keeping it very sweet and very cute. Um, it does tell a story and there will be, I'm going to do at least little liner note blurbs for all of them, or Marisha will do a few, uh, explaining what we're doing and why. But please, if you do post it online, link to the actual page, uh, just because we did write something for that. And also, uh, the more views it gets, the more likely they'll be to say, let's do a full comic book now, or, or maybe something else cool. Um, so please... Um, we, uh, the, how do we tell the full story is basically, okay, I suppose I'm going to write this down at some point, but I'll, I'll do it now. Uh, I'll, I'll at least explain some of it now. Our first, uh, Winter's Crest Festival game was basically divided into two parts. And the first half of the night was very much fun and ridiculous and basically all of us running around a festival. Uh, and then the second half of the game is where the festival all broke down into giant chaos and we had to fight stuff and things got crazy. So the comic strip is basically a lot of the little vignettes of things that happened at the festival, um, which we then filled in, and I'll get to this later, but we then filled in uh, with some stories of our group trip to Renaissance Fair, which was very much in line with the Winter's Crest Festival. Um, and we may even be showing some pictures of the group trip to Renaissance Fair um, and how that all turned out. It's ridiculous. There's no part of my room that isn't a purple background. Uh, yeah, so everything everything was was pretty much pre-critical role, and we did do a group trip to Renaissance Fair, and um, which was pretty ridiculous. I think a few photos of that are online. Um, and so the comic strip will all be social encounters. Uh, there will be no battle in the comic strip, but it will also lead into something else that we're working on that I can't talk about yet, but there's a few really cool things uh, I love the Texas Renaissance Fair. I've been there several times. Um, so there'll be, there'll be some stuff connecting into that. So, but I can't, I would get killed. I will get, start getting text messages from everybody else telling me to shush. Um, and yet, how am I doing on time before I have to, well, I've got a few more minutes. Um, I, okay, whose backstory do I really, um, I'm hoping we hold off on Grog until, until Pike gets back because they're kind of inter, interwoven. Um, I really enjoy, honestly, like, I really want to get into Scanlan and I really liked our one dip into Keyleth and I know out of game some of the stuff that's going on with Keyleth, so I'm kind of, uh... Uh, I'm kind of down with that. I mean, like, I'd love to see the twins too, but I, again, like, of, of, of what I know, uh, there's like weird stuff with Scanlan we haven't gotten into, and there's weird stuff with Keyleth, uh, Keyleth that we haven't gotten into. Um, uh, has Matt ever let anything slip before a game that, uh, helped you guys out? No. Um, the, the most he said was uh, like uh, five months ago when he's, when he asked me for my updated, uh, backstory document and his only comment was you should really get that shit together soon would be nice <laughs> uh and but again it's been three years yeah fear of orcs there's just something there i really want to get into um and maybe we'll uh, again we don't ever know where we're going to go um with any of this uh, and matt's always got everything worked out Oh, thank you. Um, uh, have fun at work, or 
you know, have, have a productive day at work, and hopefully there'll be an episode for you tonight. Nothing will go terribly wrong. Uh, the vampire bit was entirely his idea. Um, I didn't, I didn't tell Matt, when, when it came to Percy's backstory, I didn't tell Matt anything that Percy didn't know. Um, I just described the events as best as Percy could describe them. So he didn't know anything about who the Briarwoods were. He didn't know whether or not his sister was dead or alive. Uh, he, it was just his experience. Uh, and, uh, and I did not multi-class into Warlock. I know everyone keeps thinking that I did, but that is not what happened. Is the comic strip going to be an iMac pentameter? The comic strip is going to have almost no dialogue, so yes. <laughs> I'll go with yes. Um, uh, yeah, well, the picks in Percy's video were all chosen by Matt, and we're, again, we're, mm, 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 can't talk. Um, where do I want the arc to go? Uh, yeah, Wendy's killing it. Uh, I, I don't think about where I want the arc to go. I'm, I'm invested in the game. So I don't, I know that there's a lot of speculation. As a group, we don't really speculate. If that makes sense. We're not really, it's not really, we mostly just sit around and giggle. Uh, oh, hey, Kyle, I didn't see you there. What's up, man? <laughs> A lot of friends watching this. This is very odd. Um, but yeah, we, we don't really speculate as a group. We we had Matt and I had a lot of talks about the the level up, and like I was staring at luck for a little while because it would have been so useful, but it seemed kind of cowardly <laughs> to take for a character like mine who's disadvantages are all based on the ability for everything he has to go wrong. Um, and the the magic initiate just made sense that maybe is kind of a, a good character moment to kind of start taking advantage of the abil of his ability to, to having that. Like that, that, that bonus D6 came out of nowhere and we just sort of turned it into a thing. Um... What's the most ridiculous thing the party Percy has done? Sam Regal is the best at ridiculous. Uh, he he uh, he really is good at coming up. His Burt, his very first usage of Burt Reynolds was amazing. Uh, but uh, it's definitely Percy's most ridiculous. I'm not entirely sure. There there was there was some there was some good pre stream stuff that was. I felt bad because the stream came in, and like when we started the stream, we were in a, a story arc that Percy had very little. Percy was just uncomfortable and tired and cold and really not uh, enjoying himself. And then also the stream took a little while to get used to. It was a little odd. Um, Burt Reynolds came from Sam's depraved imagination, um, and and I'll say with the magic initiate thing, it was perfect also because Percy's never really going to delve into magic because it's just not his jam. Um, and so it's the perfect to give him just the, the touch of it, but now I can kind of move on. And again, there's a couple cantrips that nobody's seen and they, they're really wonderfully character appropriate and they'll come out soon. Uh, he probably does. He was very, very proud and excited to play Starscream. Um, care to share any of Percy's next tinkerings? I'll share one of them, which is I need a better and easier way to make bullets. Or not bullets, technically, but but, uh, but uh, musket balls. Uh, so that's going to be a big thing. And then getting the diplomacy glove to function a little more easily um, has required... Silencer actually weirdly... Si uh, the problem with the silencer is to use the technology of the time to build a silencer means it's one use which is a lot of effort for one shot and is just not useful. Um, I've explained who the last barrel's for. Um, this story arc is the darkest moment. Other than, other than Pike nearly dying, this is pretty much the darkest moment we've ever had. 
Um, I think this is going to be the last episode. I, again, I can't guarantee it, but it really feels like that. Um, yeah, I had, well, and I've, I've been, I've been showing, like, part of the deal with the inventions that Percy makes is I really have to make a, a case to Matt that I could build it back then. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, so yeah, that like I've 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 got lots and lots of pictures right now showing him how the glove works and going no really this will work I've got a plan. Uh, uh, the sentry when the sentry is interesting because the sentry was entirely invented by Matt. Um, I don't know what the first official. How do you want to do this? I think it was just something he said from the get go. He might have even been saying it in our previous game that we played. Um. I promise you that whatever happens with Percy it will be somebody else who kills him. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually, like, that's the interesting thing is, I, is I, I do actually know how shot was made. I used to work in the educational, uh, uh, the, the educational group at, at the Renaissance Fair, um, and teaching military history to kids, the uh, history of weaponry and development. So... I actually have a design for basically a thing that would actually make them at a much higher rate. One of the first, it was actually a, a um, just pre-Civil War system for making ammo at, a high, at high speeds. But I have to just run it by him, and then I actually have to make it, and that roll, the rolls are always really tricky. Um, yeah, that kit is awesome. Um, I'm highly entertained, and I'm going to use it for things at some point in the near future. Um, no, the the fun names actually usually come in the moment. Uh, that was, I, I don't really plan. I don't plan anything. I really don't. Uh, there are no, there are no stupid questions. Just stupid people. No. Uh, Mercer is an evil, twisted bastard. Uh, yeah, every good man has a bad man inside him, making it all possible. Um, What's the one thing that you hope will happen to Percy in the future? Um, I would like the weight of this hanging over him to get shifted. I, I would like... <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Um, I, would like, uh, I would like to try playing the character without him having a new attitude towards himself. And I'm kind of curious to see if... Uh to see if that works out. Uh, and Percy is a nobleman. They don't marry for anything other than property. So <laughs> marriage is about property. Let's, let's, you know, fun is fun. Um, uh, I'm not letting this go. Uh, how many plague masks have I gotten? Uh, none, actually, although... I have a friend who's probably going to build me an official one at some point based off of uh, our, our, very, our very serious designs. I do have a, I can show this really quick. We all miss Hannibal. Uh, this is the Raving Hat collection uh, that goes on forever. And you can see a couple of the masks. And then we actually have some of our masks. We have a bit of a mask collection uh, on the wall. Got an ogre mask, because troll mask, because those are fun. A few of the masks are hiding in here, and we have more. We actually have hat boxes and hat boxes filled with stuff. Uh, oh, the hats. There's my Mad Hatter hat, which I love dearly. Um, so, that's a thing. <laughs> oh, God, more hats. No, <laughs> it's just, we have too much stuff. Uh, I'm not going to feel guilty. I'm going to, I'm, we're going to be angry at Matt if the party TPKs, really. Um... Does the Dorilla coat of arms have a family motto? Yes, it does, although I haven't had it translated into Latin yet, which is why I haven't put it out there. But the, the English translation is the fool sees not the tree, the wise man sees. So that I've been trying to get that translated into Latin. Um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, I like the big battles because of what's, what's a game without risk and what's a game without... The game's not entertaining without really poor decisions and uh, bad ideas. Poor decisions, bad ideas, and and poor decisions and bad ideas. Bad ideas are what make a great game. And 
the fool sees not the tree the wise man sees. Um, so, I, I, I love it when everything goes wrong. It's so much more fun when everything goes wrong. Um, and I'm excited to see everything go wrong tonight. Uh, I want it to be horrible. I want it to be terrifying. Uh, the Triceratops was genius. Uh, Grog running in, screaming bloody murder was genius. I mean, like, that just turned into a giant cluster of stupid that was just fun to watch. Um... Keyleth breaking off and running into the, into the, and like we knew she was going to do it, like Keyleth breaking off and running into the skeletons was great because then it means that all led to the phenomenal return of, like you couldn't have had Pike pull that off. We wouldn't have had, like the Pike moment was built by just the sorts of character decisions that lead to a good game. And, uh, uh, is that a Frank Lloyd Wright conversation? Um, I'm actually not named after the Frank Lloyd Wright house. I'm named after a Welsh bard, but his house is named after the same person I am. Uh, uh, love me some Keyleth Jenkins. I I actually I will say that like like Keyleth is one of my favorite characters in the game just because she leads to some. Too many people play like I, I I like it that some people play smart. I play I try and play smart just because I w was brought into the game as kind of a ringer originally. The the idea being like we have all these new people, and then we need somebody who's played the game who can kind of just be there to like to like make sure nothing horrible happens. And so part of part of Percy's original intent was to sort of be a safety net and to let everybody figure out that the what the game was for and not get in the way which was also why he's kind of meek uh in his in his design was to sort of sit there and and just be kind of a canon for those moments where everything goes wrong um yes the tiger lilies are amazing i love them i've seen them live a couple times um but now that's kind of not an issue anymore and now it's just like and now there's there's i, I love it that there's people who play it safe and i'm trying to play it less safe but like Scanlan and Keyleth know how to, and Grog really know how to not play it safe. I, I don't think we can handle one more person not playing it safe, but like you need, you need people, you really need players who are willing to, to, to jump into the fray. Churches is amazing. I haven't seen them play live yet, but I really, I really like churches. Vax, Vax about, Vax definitely, overestimates himself which is great and and vex can be bought which is great like i love that we we have a character that can be bought we have a character who overestimates themselves we have a character who is way too interested in violence we have a character who's way to it who's just add and then we have a character who's morally obligated to be superman and it's great. Really, Kyle? I'll, I'll double check that. But like, I actually, I'm, I have a, I have a Latin friend. I have a friend with a, my poor friend with a Latin degree, and I have to make sure that she feels useful on occasion. Um, Percy doesn't have tension with anybody on the party. Um, the, the Percy, I would imagine, is probably closest to Keyleth, just because he's kind of snobby, and she's titled, and no matter how nice and kind he is, he definitely had a lifetime of understanding the difference between having a title and not having a title. Uh, uh, I thought about Gun for Churches and I, it just didn't, yeah. I'm, I'm actually at some point in the near future, maybe even today if I'm feeling fancy, I'm, I'm gonna take my personal Percy playlist, my personal Percy playlist, that's a lot of alliteration, and augment it on my uh, on my Spotify playlist and add some of the songs that I cut uh, and a few more that like I thought about putting on but like didn't quite hit. Um, <laughs> I know, I, 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 I call it pulling the Gendo Akari. Um, that's how I think. I get really, anytime I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the board thinking really hard 
and I'm trying to get out of the, uh, there are, there are so many things that you didn't have to think about before we were streaming that now we have to think about. Um, it's the Gendo. Uh, and I'm trying really hard to stop doing that, but it's, God, it's just such a, it's just, this is, it's such a nice way to think. So much forehead. Um, but yes, I am aware. And uh, it's one of those things that I try and do less. And one of the ways I do that is I try and put a, I try and have a coffee mug in front of me at all times because it gives me something to do with my hands. Um, oh, I love Gendo. Gendo's such a mess. I'm a mess. I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm a mess. I'm sure at some point I'll, yeah, we'll do one of these where we talk about no one, no one ends up doing stuff like this for a living without having some serious personal issues. Uh, I'm probably, we're, I don't remember. I'm pretty sure we're taking next week off. Um, uh, so I, I would, I would guess. Um, thank you. That show, I never got to see the show, but I'm a big fan of the soundtrack of it, of the Tom Waits. Tom Waits also has like seven albums that are played on nonstop. Um, but any last questions before I kill the stream? Whoa. Uh, uh, oh my God. Back to world. Uh, uh, what did I think of Sam losing to Liam in the in the great Who Looks Better? That that actually um, I voted for Liam. <laughs> Uh, I, I actually may have inspired that by, they were arguing about it on our, on our, it was like a little cute back and forth on our text stream. And I said, take a Twitter poll. And Sam went, I will take a Twitter poll and posted it the very next moment. And so I was kind of, I was kind of, uh, giggling at his, at his hubris, <laughs> What will Percy's primary motivation be after the Briarwoods are gone? I, I don't know. What does somebody do when they've been in the revenge business for so long? Uh, maybe Dread Pirate Roberts. I'm not sure. Um, Cassandra may or may not be a vampire. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm trying to see if I have a picture of the actual Cassandra around here. Cassandra, I named all of my... Uh, I, almost all of my uh, siblings are named after friends of mine. Uh... Uh, and I'm trying to see if there's a... Do I have a picture of Cassandra in the bathroom? That would be funny. No, she's painted blue. That's no help. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's, uh, we'll see. I'm, it depends on how things go. So, maybe. Uh, anyway, guys, this has been fun. Thank you for checking this out. And I'll see you tonight. Uh, talk to you later.